Welcome to Electron Online. Now that we hopefully have achieved some hmm, knowledge about how to find the inverse Laplace transform and some proficiency, let's go ahead and apply it now to solving these differential equations, a little bit more complicated differential equations. So here we have a second order differential equation with some initial conditions. For memory, we have the equations of the Laplace transform of the first derivative and the Laplace transform of the second derivative on the board. So let's go over here and take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. So we're going to take the Laplace transform of um, y double prime plus four times the Laplace transform of y prime plus three times the Laplace transform of y equals the Laplace transform of zero. Of course, the Laplace transform of zero is simply zero. Plugging in what they are using the equation here, we can say that here this becomes s squared times the Laplace transform of y minus s times the function evaluated at zero minus the first derivative evaluated at zero. plus four times the Laplace transform of the first derivative, again we use the equation over there, which is s times the Laplace transforms of f minus the function evaluated at zero. And finally we have plus three times the Laplace transform of the function y, and that equals zero. All right, what do we do next? Well, let's try to clean this up a little bit. Essentially, we want to solve this whole equation for the Laplace transform of y. But before we do that, let's plug in some of the limiting conditions in here. So we have s squared times the Laplace transform of y minus s times f sub naught. Um, the function evaluated 0, which is 3, so let's just simply write this as 3s, minus f prime of 0, which is 1, so minus 1, plus 4s times the Laplace transform of f. And of course, I'm beginning to write f's, but I could have written y's here. So I should stay consistent. I'm going to make all my f's y's. So that this way, here, I'm saving as a y. So 4s times the Laplace transform of y. y of 0 is 3. 4 times a minus 3 is a minus 12. And plus 3 times the Laplace transform of y equal zero. All right, now I'm going to move everything that doesn't contain the Laplace transform of y to the right side of the equation and factor out an L, the Laplace transform of y. So Laplace transform of y times, I have an s squared here, I have a plus 4s here, and I have a plus 3 here. That equals minus 3s, go to the right side, becomes a plus 3s, a minus 1 becomes a plus 1, and a minus 12 becomes a plus 12. What I'm going to do now is solve this for the Laplace transform of y, which is equal to, in the numerator, 3s plus 13. In the denominator, I end up with s squared plus 4s plus 3. It looks like the denominator is factorable, which means... I can write this as 3s plus 13 divided by, here we can write this as s plus 3 times s plus 1. I'm going to use the technique of partial fractions to try and solve this, which means that this has to be equal to a divided by s plus 3 plus b divided by s plus 1. If I now take this portion of the equation, so let me put some brackets around it so you can see it. I'm going to take this portion of the equation now and multiply both sides of that by the common denominator s plus 3 times s plus 1. If I do that, I get the following. I get 3s plus 13 on the left side is equal to a times s plus 1 plus b times s plus 3. And now I have to solve for the quantities a and b so that I can find the inverse Laplace transform. 
So I can write this as 3s plus 13 is equal to as plus a plus bs plus 3b. Notice on the left side I have an s term and it has a coefficient of 3, which means that 3 must equal a plus b. And I have the number 13 on the left side, which must equal a plus 3b. So what I can do here is for one of the equations, solve it for a. So I can say that a is equal to 3 minus b, and substitute that into my second equation. When I do that, I get the following. I get 13 is equal to 3 minus b plus 3b which, if I combine the b's and I move the 3 across, I get 13 minus 3, which is 10, is equal to 2b, because 3b minus b is 2b, which means that b is equal to 5. And if b is equal to 5, and I know that a is equal to 3 minus b, that means that a is equal to 3 minus 5, which is minus 2, or a equals minus 2. So now I have the values a and b, which means I can now solve for my transfer function. I can say that, uh, let's see here, I'll do it here. So f of s is equal to a divided by 3 plus, uh, s plus 3 and a is minus 2. So I get minus 2 divided by s plus 3 plus b is 5 over s plus 1. Then I can say that the function y which is equal to the inverse transfer, or the inverse Laplace transform, I should say. I'm beginning to mix words here, but be careful here. So the inverse Laplace transform of f of s, which is minus 2 over s plus 3 plus 5 over s plus 1. I got a little lost in my board right here. Okay, now we can go ahead and take the inverse Laplace transform. So this becomes, this is equal to minus 2, s plus 3 means I need an e to the minus 3t term. And 1 over s is the unit step function. Plus 5. Here I need an e to the minus t. Oh, and I don't have an, a minus there. So I have an e to the minus t there. And that would be the unit step function, u of t. And of course, if you want to leave out the unit step function, we can say that y as a function of t is simply equal to 2e to the minus 3t plus 5e to the minus t. And there it is, the solution to my differential equation. If y double prime plus 4y prime plus 3y equals 0 with those initial conditions, then the function y of t is equal to that. And that's how we do that.